have you really thought about what it would take to fake a moon landing? Any idea could have been hoaxed is quite frankly insane. When man first set foot on the moon, the entire world roared with pride. It was the biggest mission ever achieved by mankind. But why haven't we gone back? NASA formally points to dwindling public interest and financial limitations. But doesn't that sound strange? One of the greatest feats in human history was the landing on the moon. Shouldn't there have been a constant presence there, but there have been no permanent bases, mining activities or research outposts. We have decades of silence instead. The truth is far more straightforward. Nothing remains to discover. Though important to our knowledge of space travel, the moon is essentially merely a dead, arid rock. It lacks an atmosphere, substantial resources, and the capacity to support long-term life. The most important information was previously collected by NASA at the end of the Apollo missions. Since then, satellite photography and robotic missions have scanned every inch of its surface, but they have not produced any groundbreaking findings. Simply said, sending humans back isn't justified given the expenses. Think about the logistics of a mission to return. Tens of billions of dollars are thought to be needed to launch a single manned journey to the moon. In contrast, the total yearly budget for NASA is approximately $25 billion. The agency has decided to use that funding to concentrate on more exciting areas like deep space telescopes and Mars exploration. Near-Earth orbit missions are more valuable than a return to the moon, even for the private sector, which has aspirations for commercial spaceflight. Some contend that the moon's potential for harvesting rare materials like helium-3 should be sufficient justification for a comeback. Unfortunately, there is currently no practical technique available to economically extract these resources. The infrastructure needed would be more expensive than the value of helium-3 would ever generate, even if it could be mined, transported and used effectively. The moon mining dream is still just that, a dream. The question of human survival comes next. Extreme temperature swings, high radiation levels, and no built-in defense against meteors characterize the hostile environment of the moon. Even today's most sophisticated engineers would find it difficult to make the enormous technological leap necessary to build a sustained lunar base. The International Space Station already has ongoing maintenance issues since it orbits inside the Earth's magnetic field. It would be an engineering headache to establish a lunar outpost that is distant from Earth's shield. Why have other spacefaring countries similarly avoided a return to the moon if it was such a significant milestone? The European Space Agency, China and Russia all possess the capacity, but they are still concentrating on exploring Mars and other asteroids. This implies that the moon has been considered a dead end by the scientific community. Many of the justifications offered by NASA and other space agencies for why humans haven't visited the moon again appear dubious extraordinary responsibility that was on our shoulders to carry out the mission correctly. Budgetary restrictions are a frequent justification. However, the US military is given a sizable budget each year. Why hasn't a small portion of that money been devoted to lunar exploration if finance were really the problem? Lack of public interest is another assertion, as if the prospect of a moon colony or the next big advancement in space exploration wouldn't enthrall people. Why would the world no longer be as enthralled with the Apollo missions? The biological consequences of radiation exposure is one of the major ones. Some of the reasons for that is that the health consequences following radiation exposure are very complex processes. The radiation danger argument, on the other hand, contends that astronauts are too vulnerable to the dangers of deep space radiation. But why is this issue suddenly unsolvable now if it was controllable in 1969? Lastly, space agencies point to technological problems. Although they should be easier to overcome than ever before thanks to recent developments in engineering, computation and materials. There are more questions than answers with these excuses. Why hasn't humanity used its more advanced technology to reach the moon again if we were able to accomplish so more than 50 years ago? It's possible that the truth is much more complicated than what we're being told. It's almost like they know they can't go back. But did we ever go in the first place? First, let's address the most important query. Did we truly touch down on the moon? One of the most important events in history was the Apollo 11 mission in 1969, or did it? Skeptics have been pointing out obvious discrepancies in NASA's moon landing footage, dubious physics, and missing telemetry data for more than 50 years. If we actually made it to the moon, why hasn't any other nation done the same? Why, after a few missions, did we abruptly stop traveling? 
What is even more suspect is the reason behind NASA's accidental deletion of the actual tapes of the first moon landing. Doesn't it seem convenient? It went out of his control, and luckily he was able to eject before it crashed in flame. Let's delve into this so-called accidental erasure. NASA, an organization that spent billions to reach the moon, somehow lost or reused the original telemetry data, the very data that could have proven, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that humans stepped foot on an alien world, gone, erased, wiped as if it never existed. Does this sound like a simple clerical error or something more sinister? What if this data contained evidence that the mission was staged and its deletion was an intentional cover-up? The American flag is seen waving in one of the most well-known clips of the moon landing. But hold on, the moon has no air. Since there is no wind when there is no atmosphere, what specifically was causing the flag to ripple? Is the movement we observe entirely explained by the astronauts' twisting action when planting the flagpole, as NASA claims? Is it possible that the video was recorded in a controlled setting on Earth, where the illusion was produced by a mere gust of wind or a willing stagehand? Even though Apollo's photographs were shot on a surface with only one light source, the sun, they appear curiously well lit, even though every photographer knows that lighting is important. It appears as though several light sources were used because the shadows don't seem to line up correctly. Is this a sign of the brutal, relentless lunar surface or of a carefully constructed film set? In 1968, Stanley Kubrick, a filmmaker known for his meticulous attention to detail, had just completed filming 2001, A Space Odyssey. Was it he who orchestrated a flawlessly staged moon landing? Surviving the journey was NASA's greatest task, not simply reaching the moon. Anyone traveling across the very radioactive Van Allen radiation belts, which ring Earth, faces a fatal risk. How did the Apollo crew members make it through this without being exposed to excessive amounts of radiation? Many experts contend that the spacecraft's tiny aluminum shielding was comically inadequate to protect them. Despite NASA's statements to the contrary, is this yet another flaw in the official story? Trainers that we have will do that job sufficiently well. Uh, above that, I think it's just a matter of, of pilot experience. Would you not be giddy with anticipation if you had just made history by becoming one of the first people to set foot on another planet? However, the Apollo 11 crew members did not appear excited during press appearances following the mission. Their attitudes were solemn, their body language rigid. They appeared less like heroes reveling in their great accomplishment and more like individuals carrying a horrible secret. Were they concealing something? Were they afraid of making a mistake and revealing the truth? He talked to Oprah, but not to anti-doping officials. Today, Lance Armstrong's attorney said he now banished. Following the trip, Neil Armstrong, the first man to allegedly set foot on the moon, became a near hermit. He seems reluctant to go into great detail about his experience and only granted a few interviews. Why would a man who had accomplished such a remarkable feat stay out of the spotlight? Was he guilty? Did he have knowledge that the general public shouldn't have? Why haven't we returned to the moon in more than 50 years if we actually had the technology to do so in the 1960s? Every other aspect of technology has progressed. Computers now are millions of times more powerful than they were during Apollo. However, NASA asserts that it has somehow lost the capability to return to the moon and must create new technologies in order to do it. How can that be? Why shouldn't it be simpler now if we actually arrived there in 1969? Or was the initial mission a meticulously planned fake that NASA is unable to replicate because it never took place? My upcoming film, Eyes Wide Shut, is all about secrecy. Um, it's, it's, it, it takes place in the sexual underground, but it's really about secrecy. Stanley Kubrick's widow is among the several Hollywood filmmakers who have alluded to Kubrick's possible involvement in staging the moon landing. There are rumored to be subliminal clues concerning his involvement in the deception in his movie, The Shining. The kid in the movie, Danny, sports an Apollo 11 sweater and Room 237, which some people think represents the 237,000 miles to the moon, seems to be a mysterious reference to the plot. Knowing that he would never be able to state the truth directly, may Kubrick have been making subliminal admissions. The main concern is why NASA and the US government would go to such efforts if the moon landing was a hoax. The Cold War may hold the answer. One of the most important propaganda conflicts between the US and the USSR was the space race. America needed to prevail. Convincing the world that they had accomplished the impossible is the ideal method to establish supremacy. Furthermore, 
There was no going back once the trick was accomplished. The issue still stands after looking at all these contradictions. Did we truly visit the moon? Or did we only witness the greatest film ever made? Why do so many parts of the mission appear to have been staged if we actually landed? Why does NASA find it difficult to offer conclusive evidence? Was it all part of a complex deception to deceive the world? You have to make the final decision, but keep in mind that individuals in positions of authority write history, and often the real world is more stranger than fiction. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. The Moon Race, a Cold War stunt. During the Cold War, the US and the USSR were engaged in a desperate race. The moon landing was the ideal means of establishing power, but think about it. Compared to today, the technology we possessed back then was absurd. Even while Apollo 11's computers weren't as strong as a contemporary smartphone, they managed to successfully navigate 238,900 miles of space, land humans on an unknown planet, and return them safely. And yet, in 2024, with technology that has evolved enormously, we haven't been able to reverse the trend. This calls into question the real reasons for the space race. With billions of dollars spent and thousands of scientists, engineers and astronauts employed, NASA's Apollo program was a huge enterprise. However, what if the true objective was to construct a narrative of American supremacy rather than merely explore space? Winning hearts and minds and demonstrating ideological dominance were more important goals of the Cold War than simply using force. Being the first person to set foot on another celestial body is the ultimate accomplishment. What better method to do that? There is no denying the psychological impact of the moon landing. At a time when the nation was sharply divided, it served as a unifying event for Americans and a symbol of innovation and development. It was a strong deterrent to enemies as well. What else could the United States achieve if it could land on the moon? The US gained a strategic advantage from this display of technological superiority, which strengthened the notion that it was far more capable than the Soviet Union. Today, a new moon is in the sky, a 23-inch metal sphere placed in orbit by a Russian rocket. Despite losing the race to the moon, the Soviet Union persisted in its space exploration efforts, concentrating on robotic exploration, space stations, and long-duration missions. As evidence of their continued efforts, their mere space station served as a foundation for the ultimate construction of the International Space Station. Russia is still a major force in space exploration today, proving that the competition never really ended, it just changed. The geopolitical environment of space exploration is changing as countries like China and India increase their lunar aspirations. China has aspirations for a lunar outpost and has successfully placed rovers on the moon through its Chang'e program. India has shown its expanding capabilities with its Chandrayaan missions. Space is no longer only the purview of governments. Private enterprises like SpaceX and Blue Origin are joining the fray, turning it into a battlefield for new competitors seeking supremacy. Even though the Cold War is over, the space race is still going strong in other ways. The quest to conquer space is far from done. Whether it is for military benefit, scientific advancement or national prestige, who will manage the moon's resources and direct space research in the future is more important than simply who will visit there again. What are they hiding? There are many different theories as to why we haven't returned, ranging from the weird to the sinister. Some people assert that secret bases or aliens already occupy the moon. Others contend that NASA has been hiding what they found ever since they made an unexpected discovery. To put it mildly, the lack of transparency seems suspicious. Ultimately, the issue still stands. Did we actually go? If we did, what caused us to give it up so soon? There's no denying that something is off. What do you think? Make sure to share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.